Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I'm a home native. I've seen the struggle firsthand. I've seen sure. my mom struggle. Sure. Uh, not really my dad because he wasn't really there for me. But Understood. I've seen struggle in the face. How do you soften the blow? How do how do how do you, how does one soften the blow of what they see? Of like struggling because it's like I'm a student. You know, I struggle here, I struggle there. So how do I soften that blow? By realizing you have no fucking choice. <laughs> like you know, like that's that's the not fun answer, yeah. right? Like I wish I could come with a little bit more honey for you, but the reality is, like I think it's better to go the other way, right? Like I think it's like it is what it is, like. You could dwell on that struggle, which is very real, or you could change your perspective and be like, okay, it's the odds of becoming a human being are 400 trillion to one. You are more likely to win the mega millions in your life nine times than to actually have a life. So you could say, fuck it, like, I got this life, it's not as good as rich white kid that got a $400 trillion trust fund but at the same token, and let me tell you this, I look at that face and I'm like, do you, know how, do you know how sad I am for my kids? I'm being dead serious. You may think it's funny, I don't want that life. I love this narrative, I like the admiration. When you get trust fund babied, you get disrespected. Like, like my, I look at this with, I look at you with way more respect than my homies that have everything handed to them because I'm like, you had it handed, like, that's not fun either. I've spent time, like, I used to think that was fun. I've spent time with them. They're real fucked up. Like, I'm serious. Like, it's, you know, everybody's grass is greener on the other side. I get it, and like, I don't wanna be like, hey, it really sucks to be a trillionaire kid. It doesn't. But there's plenty of suicide and fucked up depression and all that. I think the right answer, man, is like to realize you got what you got, and it's like poker, right? You might have not gotten the best hand in your perspective, but you still have a shot. Exactly. You know, like my favorite story of my life is playing checkers with the founder of Uber, Travis. We're at this fancy fucking conference in Hawaii, and we're playing checkers, right? Because like two in the morning, it's like, oh, I'm just playing fucking checkers, right? <laughs> and I'm in deep shit. Like it's over. Like he's got me. Like it's like if you've ever played checkers, I'm finished. And so I'm like, fuck, man, I really don't want to lose this match. <laughs> and so. And so I decide to, I think about it for a little bit, like over a couple moves, and I decide to make pretend that I made a move that I'm upset about, hoping that he reacts to it quickly. So I make this move, and I go, fuck, and like try to make pretend that I need to go back, but like my hand was up already, so he jumps me, which set up a triple jump for me, and I won. That's how I think about your life. Thank you. Thank you, man. Listen, listen, the other thing is perspective. I've, I've been to Harlem plenty, not, you know, like, not as much as you, obviously. <laughs> but when, when, you, when, you go to, when you go to Ghana, when you go to other places, like, there's a lot of people out there, man. Like, you know, the trip that I sent a lot of my friends to that come from inner city coasts is Mississippi. Like, like, like perspective is a funny thing. Like, I just think there's only one person on earth that's allowed to complain. Like, there's you know, the seven plus billion of us, and there's literally somebody who's in last place, like on the rank, right, right? They're in a cave right now as a, as a human slave or something. I mean, this, you know, this is weird, but this is true. There's somebody who's in last place. And unless you're that person, you can't complain. And I think if you take that mindset, it gets real good. And, and that doesn't take out of the equation being a minority, being a female, being poor, being born to you know, really difficult parent situation. Like, that doesn't eliminate it. I'm just trying to figure out what the mindset is to get out of it. Because if you're on the defense, you're on the defense. Because I see the same thing happen with the kid who sits and complains, a friend of mine who literally, literally, literally has $20 million in the bank as a trust fund kid, he's losing. Everything out of his mouth is defense. Like, and it sounds ridiculous, but you sit there and it's another human being and that's their problem, right? Nobody thinks, everybody disrespects me, I'm a loser, this and that, like, that's life. You got it.